that was uh, the Maasai diet. They didn't have any other food apart from the milk from the cow, the blood from the cow, and uh, meat from the cow. Hey everybody, welcome to Wise Traditions, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. This is your host, Total Labrata Gore, and I'm really excited today because we're doing something a little different. This is our first bonus episode for you. We've been on the air for six months, and this is our way of saying thank you for listening. You're going to love this episode. It's number 29, and it's a conversation with one Maasai community leader, Dixon Olegisa. I spoke with Dixon just last month in his village, Oiti, in the region of Matapato in Kenya, near the border with Tanzania. You'll hear crickets chirping and other ambient noises, which I hope will make you feel like you're right there with us. You'll hear from Dixon's own lips about his community's dietary habits, why he believes they are buying what he calls foreign foods, and how these habits are affecting the health of his community and much, much more. He'll talk about his childhood, and the foods he grew up eating. You're going to be fascinated. Listen closely and consider how you too can apply practically, as Dixon likes to say, the principles of healthy living. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Dixon. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Dixon Olegisa, and I am a friend of Lisa, and now I'm a friend and a family of uh, Hilda and Mitch. That's right, Mm. that's right. We've been visiting in... Oiti, in the region of Matapato, it's near Tanzania. And Dixon has been an amazing host, and he's given us opportunities to share these ideas about wise traditions with his community. I came last year, and now I'm back again. And why don't you tell people, Dixon, what was the response from the community when they heard about these Weston A. Price principles? Yeah, I think the response was uh, positive. We had uh, our first meeting with the youth, and uh, the meeting was attended, and the response about the West traditions was really very, very interesting. They were very interested, and they said something like, we want to help with this campaign, didn't they? Yes. They said, actually, this is a message, which is a, a good message. And normally, when a good message comes to the community, then the community will pass that uh, good message to others yes. who were not in, in, the, in the meeting. And the pastor, in this evening's meeting, or the afternoon when we went to the community, the pastor said some positive things as well, didn't he? Yes, the pastor is, uh, is my age mate. So uh, we grew up together. He actually, he, he knows all these things, what we are talking about. So he said, this is, uh, he committed himself as a pastor of the church that will start from the church as the bible says that we start from jerusalem so our jerusalem is our the the members from our church then now we can move to other uh, neighboring communities ah yes it's like concentric circles jerusalem judea samaria Mm. and the remotest part of the earth yes so so that was the promise of the pastor wonderful that's wonderful Mm -hmm. and i remember him saying before we left also he wanted all the women to start cooking traditional foods starting today. Yes. Normally when you learn in the, a lesson from the class, then you, you do it practically. So what the pastor was meaning is that since in our community, the women who are the ones who prepare food for the family. So he was uh, just advising the, the women to start from the family because there is a saying that say charity begins at home. Yes. That's right, yes, I've heard that saying. Dixon, now you said he's your age mate, is that yes, what you said? Yes, the pastor, we grew together. Yeah. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that, because it seems that you grew up eating a lot of traditional foods, right? Yes, it is a long story, because uh, me and the pastor, we grew up in a, a same village. We were actually born in the same village. Okay. And we grew up, and uh, we have one thing in common that our families were not really rich. So they were poor. We did not have enough livestock. So most of the time, my father and his father were, mostly we depend on the wild meats. So they have to go and hunt in order for us to get food. So 
that's where we grew up together. We went to school together. So we share a lot of uh, common things with him. And what were some of the wild meats that your fathers would hunt? They would hunt, uh, during that time, I remember actually in the, in the early 1978-1976, to 1980, there was a lot of hunting because there was a lot of uh, uh, there was a lot of market of the wild wild animal skin, like the leopards, like the ivory uh, elephant tusk. Yes, they were they had a very big market, and the people were given license to hunt. Ah, so our fathers, both of the father of the pastor and my dad, they were also friends, so they go together to hunt. So when they hunt the animals, like to get the horns from the from the buffaloes, then they can also bring meat to us so that we can. So we mainly feed on the buffalo's meat and also antelopes ah. and also, yeah, zebras, yeah. And what about raw milk? Did you take milk from the cow at that time? Yes. The raw milk was our, that was our, the Maasai diet. They didn't have any other food apart from the milk from the cow, the blood from the cow, and uh, meat from the cow. Oh, I see. And I remember you telling me a story once that when you were training to be a warrior during the Moran time, yes, yes. you could last really long on raw milk, right? You said yes. you would take it with you. Tell me that story again. Throughout the year. When we were young, not only when we were practicing Moranzin, but also when we are young, we didn't have any other food apart from milk and uh, blood from mm -hmm. the cow. So that is the only diet you can find from the Maasai. Wow. So the fat we get from the cow, from the milk, there's a way they can make fat from milk. It's very nice and very healthy. And oh, the, really? And the young children, when the child is born, the child is raised up only from breastfeeding and the fat from the milk. The fat from the milk? Yes. Ah, oh, that sounds like a very solid beginning. Mm. Now, how do you see the culture changing now? How do you see the diet of the Maasai changing now? It is tremendously changing. People are running to buy foreign foods. If I said foreign foods, it is food which are not from the, they are not from the, the Maasai community. Mm -hmm. They are made, human made food. Uh -huh, the processed yes. foods. The processed food. Uh, what are they buying? They buy like uh, the maize flour. Uh -huh, the maize the, flour. The, yeah, the oils, like uh, kimbo, fry meat, they call it oils, and uh, sodas. Jewish, all this, yeah. How is that affecting them, do you think? Yeah, there are a lot of uh, foreign diseases. We call it foreign because we did not, we did not uh, have those diseases before. But since people starting, uh, starting to adapt these foreign cultures of eating, like the processed food, now people are getting sick. Oh. We have so many cases in Mass Island of cancer. Cancer. Yeah, recently we lost a, a teacher and a, and a pastor from our community, whom we grew together. Yeah. We went schooling together. We were a classmate. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, we lost him because of cancer. Oh. Yes. So and now we have a, a lot of diseases like uh, high blood pressure, uh, like diabetes, all these diseases which we didn't know before when we were. Uh, yeah, around 1919, 19, uh, up to 1980, cancer was just uh, like something, it was strange to us, but now it's killing our own community. Oh my goodness. Mm. And so, how did you find out about the Weston A. Price Foundation? I found it out through a friend. Her name is Lisa. They were here, so they had a course. It was one of the, uh, the, the first places for orientation. The I first see. missionaries, they come to Kenya, they come to Matapato, stay with the Maasai here, stay with us here, and learn about the culture and how to live, to right. live with the communities. So I met this friend. 
now I don't call her a friend, but I call her my sister. Ah. Because uh, she's really, I am part of her life, yes. and she's also part of my life. Mm-hmm. So we met through the faith, the body of Christ yes. made us to be one. So she's the one who really introduces me to Western Price Foundation. Ah, oh, very yeah. good. Yeah. And it sounds like what you've heard, these wise traditions from the foundation, make sense because you see it playing out in your community, right? Yes. In other words, you see that when people ate the traditional foods, they were not sick, and mm. now they're getting sick. Yes. So it makes sense to you. Mm. And have you had other opportunities to share what you've been learning from the wise traditions um, apart from in your community? Yes, I actually had a friend. He's a lecturer of the university. And, uh, yeah, I shared some information, and I gave him a book, which I got from a friend. And he really he, he's very interesting in learning about the, about the West traditions. Also, it seems like I'm also getting addicted to, <laughs> to this uh, message because it is something that I want to keep on talking about. So since I am a community leader, I have a very big opportunity of interacting with people. So I have, I think I have that uh, uh, capability of spreading this message to other people. And what's beautiful is one thing the pastor said today is we are not, the wise traditions or Western Price people are not bringing new information to you. You all as a culture and a people already have traditions that you simply want to return to. Mm. Can you tell us some of the traditions? Like, tell me a little bit about what you give women who are expecting a baby. Uh, the women who are expecting a baby, they mostly, they are selective with food. It's not only any food they come across that they eat. Because they need to protect someone who is going to be the future of tomorrow. Yes. So they are selective. And they are not... They are, they, are, they are not just people uh, who are just to eat anything they met on the way. So the first thing is they, they eat the meat from a healthy cow. Mm-hmm. When the cow will die, they don't eat the meat. Oh, okay. It has to be a healthy cow. It has to be a healthy cow. Ah. They also drink milk from a healthy cow. Mm-hmm. So meat and milk are the main diets of the... We have also some kinds of uh, natural uh, natural fruits. Ah. Just from the forest. Uh-huh. They are God-grown fruits. Uh-huh. They are not from the farming. It's just they just grow. Oh, they're just wild. Uh, just wild. Uh-huh. And they are very, they're very healthy for the expectant mothers, pregnant women. And once the woman gives birth... What do you all recommend she take right away? From the beginning, when she just delivers a baby, the first thing she's given is a blood. If she gave birth to a boy, uh-huh. then immediately they will get a, a blood from the from the bull. Ah. And if it is a girl, they get a blood from the heifer. Ah, from the heifer. Yeah, heifer. Interesting. From the, uh, a female? Yes. And a male. Ah. So they get from, a, if it's a girl, they get from there. So when immediately when they get the baby, a woman can come outside of the Maasai hut and say, Thank you, Lord. You have today added the family, if it is from my family, the yeah. family of Dixon. Uh-huh. So the first thing the Maasai do is to praise God because of the of the new born baby. Ah. The second thing is to get the blood from the from the, the cow. Uh-huh. So the the mother is given the blood to replace the lost blood uh-huh. uh, during the delivery process. Right, right. And that's a tradition. Yes, that is a tradition. Uh-huh. They believe we believe not they believe but I do also believe that when the baby is born the mother loses a lot of blood. So immediately she will be given the blood from the cow to replace the lost blood uh, during the delivery. Oh, very good. Mm. Now, what about uh, what are some traditions if a child 
seems to be becoming sick, what would you give them if they seem to be catching a cold or something like that? We have some traditional herbs. Ah, traditional herbs. Which are mixed with the uh, fat from the from the milk. So they are mixed with the traditional herbs and the, the baby is given. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Huh. Mm. And in case people are forgetting what the traditions are, you showed me today that there is a book that a Maasai wrote years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that book. Yeah, I think this was the first Maasai scholar. Ah. His name is S.S. Olesankan. It is putting... Because their culture, their Maasai the traditions and uh, culture is diminishing, I compare this scholar with the founder of the Western Prize Foundation. I think this professor, he knew everything. Because we are adapting foreign cultures, mm -hmm. our culture is diminishing. So he thought of writing a book, and he listed down all the, not only the foods, but all the cultures that the master used to practice. Oh. It is a good book. I wish someone could translate it into English. Do you think someone has? Uh, in English? Yeah. I don't really know. I haven't not seen in in English. Because the book? the book was purposely, the aim of the of, uh, the of the scholar was purposely to benefit the Maasai. Of course. From their culture. Of course, of course. So I know he was able to write in English, but he decided to write to put it in Ma language because it was for the benefit of the Ma community. And what's the title of the book again? It is called in Maasai in Tepen or Maasai. And what does that mean? It's like the legends of the Maasai community, mm. the culture. So this could be something of a guidebook for your community. Yes. It has so many things, how to feed an infant baby, what that should the pregnant woman do during the, we have the sacrificial ceremonies, how to perform the, all these ceremonies from age set to age group. It has all this Maasai culture. Wow, yes. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So Dixon, you said earlier that people are buying these foreign foods. Why do you think they're buying them? I think they are buying them because they are, in our eyes, they are very attractive. You see something in the packet and you think something special is in it. <laughs> it looks shiny and pretty, it right? It does look shiny, pretty, and uh, you know, they are fast food, something that you can cook in a minute, so then it's ready. So they thought that they are healthy for the family. So, yeah, they are very admired. You can admire the, the, the food. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, so that's kind of luring people. Even in... A village like yours, well, I don't feel like you're very close to a huge town. Where are people buying these foods? You know, they are all over because they have, like in my village, we have small shops here, and they sell that they get from the uh, from Maltisa, that is a small trading center where they also buy from Namanga. Then they come and sell them in the community. So it's not hard to get. It's not hard to get. And is it hard to get? The traditional foods? It is not hard, but we have this thing, it's called civilization. People think that they are civilized. So they are earning everything for civilization. They see eating traditional food is a primitive way. Uh -huh. Like drinking the blood. Most of the people who are very well educated in the Maasai community, they see drinking a blood from the cow is a primitive eating. Eating uncooked meat, like the kidney, because we don't cook the kidney immediately, we kill the cow, just get the kidney, when it's very, still very fresh, you eat it. Eat it raw. We eat it raw. So they said, if you go to class, even when we were in school, those are part of the lessons that we are, we are taught in the school, to cook, boil everything before you eat, like milk, you have to boil milk before you, you drink. Like meat, you have to, to boil uh, meat before you, you eat to kill germs. So we have also this kind of uh, science. It's also bringing complications. I see. So, yes. 
So the education is pushing in the other direction. Yes. And so the more educated people think they don't want to go backwards. They mm. don't want to go back to yes. the traditions. Mm. They think it's old fashioned. Mm. And I imagine with young people, that is even a stronger push toward the new, right? Yes. In other words, when you were in school, did they teach you these things were old fashioned? In school. Yeah. When you were a child. Yeah. Or, young. or is it just now that they're teaching that? They started do, uh, teaching us when, when we were in school. But still, by that time, the culture was very strong. Our parents, they believe more in the culture, but not in the education. Oh, more in the culture and not in the education. Not in education. Oh, but now it's switching. Now it's switching. So the challenge is to hold on to these traditions, if we know they're good, in the face of a culture and education that pushes in the other direction. Yes. That's the same challenge we have in the United States. Mm. We really do. Yes. Because people think, oh, no, if this is modern and convenient, this is better than cooking the old-fashioned way. Although, I have to say the tide is turning. People mm. are so sick, Dixon, mm. yeah. that they're realizing something's wrong, and it's making them seek out these wise traditions. So, Dixon, you are facing, um, some would call it an uphill battle. It is challenging to go against the education and the pressure to modernize. Mm. What are some things your family has done to go back to traditional ways in terms of your diet? We are trying, since we, we had this message from the Western Price Foundation, we are trying to practice in reality. Now uh, my wife, she was a teacher before, and now she has abandoned the teaching. Because the family is, is more important than the, the work of teaching. Right. So now she's, she has started a, a small farm. We are growing our own food. We have some kales. Those are vegetables, grains. Right. So we don't have to go to the market to buy the or from the shops. But actually now people are coming to buy from us. Ah, that's amazing. Yes, I've seen this garden. You have yes. kale, potatoes... Bananas, cassava, cassava. Yeah. oranges, <laughs> oranges, peppers, yeah, peppers, tomatoes, yes, yeah, tomatoes. And you're not using pesticides. No, we are not using pesticide. So you have really taken a step in a very good direction. Thank you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm. And of course, we just had some raw milk tonight. Yeah. So you are doing your best to change your family and affect your community. How did you like the raw milk? I liked it. It was. It seemed like it was fermented a little bit, like yeah. sour. Yeah. So it was a little bit more like yogurt. Mm. But I liked it. It was very yeah. rich, and I'm sure it was full of all those good enzymes and mm. things that we mm. need. Mm. So I it, think tomorrow, your stomach, tomorrow you will feel yeah. like uh, you, have, uh, you have eaten something good. Oh, God. Yes. You will realize that tomorrow. And that reminds me, at tonight's meeting with the community, one man said, whenever I drink the blood, yes. I still feel really good, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think part of it is also maybe people just returning and feeling the difference in their own health. Yes, you have also seen the, that we are not buying a maize flour from the shop. We had our own maize, and we just grill them and make uh, ugali for our own. Oh my gosh, so, you're making that at home. Yes. I did see the maize drying. Is that yeah. for the flour? Yeah. Wow, ugali mm. is this traditional yeah. kind of cornmeal dish mm. and they're making their own flour. That is mm. fantastic. Mm. So I just want to hear one more story about your childhood. Tell mm. me what it was like when you would go to school and what your health was like. Uh, I was really very healthy. I have to walk uh, from my place, uh, from where I live, my village, to the school. It is six kilometers. So that is around one hour. Oh, gosh. For, for a Maasai. One, one hour Maasai walk. Probably it is uh, two and a half hours for uh, Mzungu. Oh my gosh, for white people, two <laughs> for white and a half people. hours. So, uh, I walk to and fro 
and I go very early in the morning. I just take a cup of milk early in the morning, direct from the cow. Mm -hmm. That raw milk early That's in the morning. Milk. Yeah, then I walk to school. We didn't have chai, it's just only milk. Ah. So I go to school for the whole day. I don't feel hungry. For I don't have lunch. Uh -huh. We don't eat lunch. Uh -huh. Unless during the lunch break, we go and eat some wild uh, honey. Yes. Like uh, we hunt quails. You know quails? Yes, and a quail. Yeah. yeah. We have, uh, uh, me and the pastor, we are really good in making. We have some traps. So early in the morning when we are going to school, we make the traps. So when we come at lunchtime, so we have trapped uh, a number of quails. Uh -huh. So quails and, and honey were our lunch. Okay. Because we are not able to walk from, uh, from school back to home to have milk. Right. So in the evening, we take milk. Uh -huh. So it was milk every day. I see. And uh, blood on Saturday and uh, Sunday. Well, that's when we get the uh, blood from the cow and the whole family can drink the blood every weekend. And all of this gave you the strength to go to school, come home, yeah. study. You felt strong and good. I felt strong. I felt energy, energetic. When it rains, I don't care. I don't feel like uh, cold. Right. There was nothing like malaria. No. There was nothing like uh, cough was very rarely. And when you are coughing, you are given honey and mixed with uh, with some uh, traditional medicine. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that is what I gave my daughter Camilla. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I can show you that uh, it's very hot. You mix with honey, then you eat, and it's very good for the chest. Oh, yeah. that's excellent. Mm. Well, I'm so glad to talk with you. I know that... Uh, we all can learn from the wise traditions mm. you are applying in your life and that I'm just so glad you're close to your traditions. You know, Thank you're you. close to your ancestors. We in the United States have a lot to learn from communities like yours that have those traditions close by and are trying to return to them. So thank you for this conversation. Thank Nixon. you so much. I know and I promise that there will be a very huge U-turn from my community. You know a U-turn? Yes, a U-turn. We're going, turning all the way around, 180. Yeah, we will be turning 90 degrees back oh. to the, looking back to the, where we came from. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Well, we wish you the best. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening today. If you want to know more about the Weston A. Price Foundation and the Wise Traditions Principles, just go to our website, westonaprice.org. Again, this was episode number 29, A Maasai Story with Dixon Olegisa. If you want to support the work with the Maasai Village and with overseas outreach, go to the westonaprice.org website, click on Get Involved, and then click on Donate. Go to Overseas Outreach and give the amount of your choice. Thanks for listening. Thanks for helping. This podcast is brought to you by the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts.